Remember in the Fantasia review that I said I despised Dumbo as a kid? I did, but once again like Pinocchio, I feel like I underestimated this movie. Dumbo was released in theaters following Fantasia and it hasn't exactly aged well, especially this song. So without further ado, let's fly straight into the plot. Oh yeah, and to keep things entertaining, let's add some background music. Oh wait a minute, I might get a copyright claim for this. Never mind, I'll stay up for another time. The movie starts off with a flock of storks that are delivering baby animals. Okay, this is pretty cute. Mr. Stork is voiced by Sterling Holloway, who voiced several of Disney's most beloved characters, such as the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, Ka in The Jungle Book, and of course, Winnie the Pooh. Mr. Stork is delivering a baby to Mrs. Jumbo, an elephant who's voiced by Elsa Jarvet. She names her baby Jumbo Jr., who has no voice actor and is part rabbit. Good thing Mr. Jumbo wasn't here, or else he'd have a field day. The other elephant, who reminds me of the flowers in Alice in Wonderland, starts poking fun at the newborn and nicknames him Dumbo, stuck up and haughty at its finest. With another Thomas the Tank Engine scene, and this song that I'll just skip, we witness this parade that uses the audio of someone yawning in the microphone, and this reused Tarzan yell. During a bath, several perverts come waltzing in and Mrs. Jumbo kicks out their teeth, which results in Dumbo getting taken away. After being rained with abuse from Bitch, Bitchy, and Bitchiest, Timothy the Mouse sets fire to their tent and comforts Dumbo. Timothy, who's voiced by Edward Brophy, comes up with the idea to make Dumbo famous to get his mother freed from Azkaban. So Timothy breaks into the ringmaster's tent and starts whispering the idea. Either Timothy can speak human language or the ringmaster can speak animal, because if neither were the case, then this story would have hit a dead end. The great act fails royally because of him, which causes Dumbo to be made a clown and these elephant ladies getting killed. Good riddance. You know how I joke that the main characters get drunk? Well, this time, I'm not making it up. Dumbo and Mortimer Mouse get drunk from a barrel of alcohol and start seeing pink elephants as I hid under the couch from fear at the age of five. The two are then woken up from their hangover by a few crows. Dandy Crow, the leader, is voiced by Cliff Edwards, who played Jiminy Cricket in Pinocchio. Figuring out that Dumbo had flew up the tree thanks to his ears, Dandy and his friends help Timothy by giving him a crow feather so Dumbo would think it's magical and have the motivation to believe in himself. Dumbo then steals the shell, becomes famous, gets reunited with his mother, and Timothy takes all of his paychecks. The end. So let's talk about the movie. It's okay. I will admit that like Pinocchio, I've underestimated this movie. But unlike Pinocchio, it doesn't change my mind to give it a stamp of acceptance. After not watching this for over a decade, I assumed that this had no plot and just went with whatever it had, judging from the things I could remember. But the plot is pretty simple. It's about an animal who's being helped by someone small to show that he's worth something. Why yes, Disney, I have seen Charlotte's Web. The Dumbo universe is illogical and confusing. The train is for some reason sentient and the states in the US have their names burnt in them for miles. I can excuse the idea of storks existing, but when it's mixed in with animals wearing clothes and some not, or the ringmaster and Timothy speak in the same language, it generally comes out as strange. Obviously, the ringmaster who's voiced by Herman Bing and Timothy understanding each other is for plot reasons. Otherwise, how could they get Dumbo under a spotlight? So I guess I could excuse that too. However, Timothy can clearly write English, so why couldn't they do it that way? The pink elephant scene, which was visually entertaining, felt like a leftover from Fantasia making it feel out of place. What was even the point of them getting drunk? They could have had Dumbo walk off the edge of something and start flying, but since he had his eyes closed, he wouldn't have the confidence in himself which would still bring in the crow's feather at the end having importance. Oh, and speaking of which, the crow's portrayal is disrespectful and indicative of its time in history. Alright, positives. A positive I noticed when I got to the parade scene is that this movie is certainly one of the best when it comes to a variety of colors. Most Disney movies that have some of the plainest and blandest shades, particularly ones that take place in cities, like Lady and the Tramp and 101 Dalmatians, while the other focus more on a single color, like Bambi and the Jungle Book having several shades of green. It's kind of nice seeing all these bright colors that don't overlap or compete with each other, and as strange as it may sound, it kind of reminds me of my old lunchboxes as a kid. Something on the side that I've noticed is that Timothy Mouse and Jiminy Cricket are basically the same characters but with different motivations. Mort has a big heart and cares for Dumbo's feelings and sanity, which makes him the only character in this movie to know what love is. 
Jim Jiminy, on the other hand, cares for Pinocchio, yet keeps abandoning him when he gets fed up, not even being good at his job as conscience and doing zilts during the monstro scene. So, who's better, Rat or Cricket? What do you think? Timothy is more likable than Jiminy, no doubt about that. Tim actually shows constant care for Dumbo instead of ditching the poor thing for the marionettes like Jim. I like how these elephant ladies get what's coming to them. Wait, they're at the ending? I thought they got killed off. Tell me those elephants are dead. I need to hear these words. Do I need to say all those words exactly? They're still alive! Yeah, all I can say about these characters is that they're rude and snobbish and that they can shove a peanut up where it hurts. Dumbo is so adorable and that's pretty much all there is to talk about him. Mr. Stork is likable, but what's a shame is that he's like in and out of the movie and never shows up again. Did they ever even get him off of that sign? With the character, story, and bizarre universe out of the way, now it's time to raise the songs from least favorite to best. In eighth and last place is We're Gonna Get More Money. I honestly didn't know this song existed, not even as a kid. In seventh place is Happy Rouseabouts. Sometimes saying that's racist just isn't enough. The reason it's not in last place is because you get a pretty solid beat if you took out the lyrics. Number six, the Happy Birthday Song. It's a birthday song and nothing special. I hear it four times a year since I have three sisters. And the number 5 spot is Baby Mine. Told you I was going to get my ass kicked for this review. It's quiet, slow, and kind of a sweet lullaby. Number 4, The Stork Song. Next to the pink elephant scene, this song segment scared me as a child. But besides that, it's pretty okay, with the exception of the lyrics at the beginning being a little too quiet. No wonder I didn't remember the lyrics to any of these. As a child, I always sang the songs without saying the words. Something like, <laughs> Something, 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 something. Oh boy, he's cracked. He's got nothing. Bronze Cup, Pink Elephants on Parade. Pure nightmare fuel. Besides that, it fits really well with the scene, being about hallucinations and losing your fragile little mind. Silver Cup, the Casey Jr. song. It's very catchy and upbeat, and the ringmaster should be thrown in jail from how he has his animals positioned. What about these giraffes? What if they're entering a tunnel? Gold Cup, when I see an elephant fly. It's definitely more catchy than the train song, and it kind of reminds me of those songs played on Schoolhouse Rock. So that was my Dumbo review. Its meaning is nice and simple, but there's definitely more better movies that fall under the Be Yourself subject. Mulan is a great example. So is Aladdin, and Shrek, and How to Train Your Dragon, and- So yeah, it's not the best thing Disney has released, and it's somewhat forgettable. I'm giving the Dumbo 1941 movie a 3 out of 10. This is why I don't reveal my postal address. Now with this movie revealed, it's time to reveal the next Disney movie, Bambi.